Antibiotic resistance is a major threat to, to human health and also to animal health. The research we do at, at I3 and with our collaborative partner, New South Wales Department of Primary Industries, takes a One Health approach to the study of antibiotic resistance. The problems that we're working on here in Australia are global problems. They're problems which affect uh, animal production systems and food production systems globally. So our research takes into the relationships through the food chain, whereby food production systems impact on human health, but also in the way we produce animals for food production system and the way that antibiotics get removed from their bodies in, in partially metabolised and in unmetabolised states and those antibiotics then get released into the environment and drive the antibiotic resistance in complex microbial and soil populations and aquatic environments. OSGEM is an acronym which stands for the Australian Centre for Genomic Epidemiological Microbiology and it's a collaboration between the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries and the I3 Institute. So the partnership is a really a very good one because uh, it brings together the technological capabilities of I3, including access to cutting edge microscopy, and particularly super resolution microscopy. Our bioinformatics capabilities uh, through the recruitment of key people from overseas that have been able to build these pipelines which allow us to handle big data. Our proteomics capabilities which allow us to identify new vaccine targets. And the capabilities of New South Wales Department of Primary Industries, which is predominantly uh, their vast collections of microbial populations, which they've gathered over many years. And it's these populations of bacteria which we want to mine using these technologies to help us to identify the types of bacteria that are circulating in our food production systems and also in our plant pathogens, which affects plant health. Over the last few years, the cost of sequencing a bacterial or a microbial genome has come down enormously. And so what we've been able to do now is to sequence a large numbers of microbial genomes, and we've been able to put those into databases. And so now we're generating these vast uh, data sets which require new ways to handle big data. And so the relationships that I've developed here at UTS and within the I3 Institute involves experts that have the capacity to deal with big data sets with computational pipelines to handle all that genomic sequence so that the biologists such as myself can access the information we need to get a better handle on how antibiotic resistance is evolving and moving through microbial populations. What we envisage is that in the next five to ten years, we'll be able to sequence microbial genomes at the bedside, at the patient's bedside. So what that means is a, a doctor can look at the information that's provided to them, which indicates what antibiotic resistance genes are present in that pathogen that's causing the disease in this patient that's really ill, and give the appropriate antibiotic regime to control that infectious disease. The research environment that we've been fostering in the I3 Institute it's really starting to pay a lot of dividends now because we have these excellent teams of people that are all working closely with one another. Within I3 now we are looking towards developing our international collaborations on a much greater scale and already we have uh, PhD students and collaborative interactions occurring where people spend considerable amounts of time in our, in our laboratories to learn the developments that we've uh, produced here within the I3 Institute.